right this time. All right, Facebook is live. I'm waiting for somebody to come on. I guess it's trying to wait for somebody to come on. All right, while it is trying to build its audience on Facebook, we're going to go and get started on the conference call. Welcome, everyone, to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Conference Call. Um, uh, thank, oh, hallelujah. We just thank God for all of his blessings and praise him. Let us go to the Lord now in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, because you've been better to us than we have been to ourselves. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together over this technology this morning, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for the technology of Facebook, the technology of conference calls, the technology of the Internet. Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over this technology as we use it to get your word out all around the world, dear Lord. We are trying to be true to your word where you told us to be your witnesses. You said when, when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we shall be your witnesses. Witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, uh, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the world, Lord. Well, this technology is helping us do that, Lord, and we're going to give you all the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. We ask you now, Lord, that we plead the blood of Jesus over the technology. We plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that is listening right now, dear Lord, and those that are going to be listening to these recordings in the future on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all of that stuff, God. We just thank you right now, Lord, that, that you're going to work through this word to, to increase their faith in you. We're going, that you're going to work through this word, dear Heavenly Father, that, that each one of us will learn to live a, cl a closer walk with you, that our relationship with you will be more stronger, Lord. We thank you and we praise you for this. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, dear Heavenly Father, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock, my strength, and my redeemer who lives. For it is in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we pray. Help us now, Lord, to not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, amen and amen. Our, our lesson today, and again, welcome everyone to the Guiding Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference called This Is Your Sunday School Lesson Edition. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy from New Harvest E Church in Harvest, Alabama. Hallelujah. Our lesson today comes from Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and it goes verses uh, 18 um, through 26, and then it talks also about verses, I mean, chapter 6, verses 1 through 10. So it's a whole lot of scripture, and because it's a whole lot of scripture, I don't want to just read it all in the beginning. We're going to come back to it, uh, because each of us, we'll just read the scriptures as we go through it. Um, the title of today's lesson uh, can be simply, uh, The Spirit Helps Us Live. Um, some might say the Spirit helps us live right. Um, um, this also is the lesson where we have the fruit of the Spirit, so it could be called the fruit of the Spirit. And I, I, either one, it don't make me a difference. I, I'm like this. My mindset is, is that this, this is all about the Spirit being involved in our lives in such a way that that when we allow him in, when we submit to his will and his way, that, that we are putting ourselves in a position to be fruitful for God, to be his witnesses, to help somebody, to visit somebody, to be the fruit that is in this world. Oh, hallelujah. And so let us begin the reading. I'm going to read the first verse uh, see, no, no, no. He says, "Go, go through the, go through the, um, the lesson here." Ver the the key verse, the key verse is verses twenty two and twenty three of Galatians chapter five, and it reads like this out of the New King James or out of the King James version of the Bible. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. 
Hallelujah. And the key concept is God's spirit wants us to, to live right. Now, now for, for, for my keys for my kids, it's three parts for the keys for the kids so that if you listen to this, as children are listening to this, they'll be able to understand this lesson wholeheartedly. And it's simply this. Number one, God wants his children to live holy lives. I'm going to say that again. God wants his children to live holy lives. Two, we are to follow God's Holy Spirit. And so if you want to put those two together, in order to live a holy life, you must follow God's Holy Spirit. And then the third, the Holy Spirit will help us produce good things in our lives. He will help us produce good things in our lives. So, so this, this passage of scripture, Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, we're familiar with the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the goodness, the faith, the meekness, the temperance, or, or, or self-control, however you want to call it. We, we, we're used to this, this passage of scripture. We've heard it over and over again in the church that, that, that we have to produce the fruit of the spirit, which is that love, that joy, and that peace, and on and on and on. And so God's Holy Spirit works in us to produce good spiritual fruit from, 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 from our hearts, and he shows us, he shows us how we should live. The, 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 this fruit is not something that we can produce on our own. It, it, it takes the Holy Spirit to help us to live the right way for God. When we, when we let the Holy Spirit help us in our lives, we will be loving towards others. Oh, hallelujah. Our spirits should be filled with gladness and filled with peace. Uh, we should be patient and kind and good to others. And we should be faithful and humble and be able to control our actions. And we should treat each other. As we want to be treated. That, that, that's, that's all that the Holy Spirit is, 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 is trying to produce in us. When we submit to his will and submit to God's way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now for those deep folks on the, on the line that want to go down deep. We're going to look at it from this standpoint. Today's lesson we're going to look at some, 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 some facts. Uh, to teach that we are to be like God in his goodness, his grace, and his love. The biblical principles that we're going to pull out is to contrast the life reflecting God's grace and the life centered on serving oneself. And then the daily application that we want to walk away from this lesson is to identify the elements of the fruit of the spirit uh, that, that we are to model uh, and, and where we ought to make changes in our lives. I have to tell this story of, 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 of my encounter as I start this lesson with the fruit of the Spirit. Um, yes, I, I grew up around the church. I, I, uh, parents, grandparents, they took us to church. And, and um, um, then when I uh, became a, a young teenage. I would go to church mostly to chase the girls. I wasn't going to church just to hear about the word of God and all of that. And then in college, I, I, I would attend church because I know that if I went to church, I was going to meet someone that, that uh, was going to be nice to me and uh, they would take us home and give us meals and, and don't let them have daughters. Oh Lord, we was going to have a good time. And, 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 and so then uh, when I did get married, me and the wife, the wife and I, we, we attended church when we were in Houston and, and, and I got closer to God and I ran from my call and then we moved to St. Louis and I was still getting close to God as we were attending church there. But what I learned, what I learned was the fruit of the spirit. I learned the fruit of the spirit. And, and one of the things that I learned was, is that uh, everybody does not have all of the fruit of the Spirit operating in their lives at all given times. We have to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in order that it, that it lives in our lives. So my pastor, where I was called under, he had the, 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 the fruit of love. 
the, the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, and peace. He, he, was, very, he was very loving. He was very peaceful. And, and, and he got joy all the time. And, and he had a whole lot of faith. And I was like, wow, God, I like that. I like that. But then eventually I, I accepted my call and God moved me down here to Huntsville, Alabama. And, and I, my, my new pastor I came up under, he, he had some of those same characteristics. He was operating in the fruit of the spirit. But then the things that came out in him that I, I really enjoyed and, 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 it, and it just engulfed me was this meekness and this, this kindness and this gentleness and this self control. And so I, I learned, I learned all of that. And we, we, when we talk about our pastor here, we talk about his integrity and his integrity is full with that, 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 that gentleness, that meekness and that, that, that self. And he has this long suffering. Well, he, he, cause he, he, I, I tell tease him, he, he suffers long praying for somebody like me. Okay. And, and that's, and those are the things people have to, we have to, cultivate that fruit in ourselves and then over time and the more and the more we submit to God's will and God's way uh, uh, according to how the spirit is leading and guiding us we will we will cultivate these fruits of the spirit or the fruit of the spirit and, and, and we'll see that more and more in our lives Oh, hallelujah. So I could stop right here and that would be the end of our lesson because I taught, I'm telling you, I, I didn't probably just gave some folks some good, good food right now to think about how to cultivate the fruit of the spirit. Now, now, now let's talk about this. Let's talk about this just a little bit more because see somebody say, well, you're talking about the fruit of the spirit, but I don't understand what it is. Well, um, the word love. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Some people say that, that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Then everything else that comes after it is really uh, just showing you what love is all about. And I'm not going to argue with them with that because all, love has all of this as a component. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And all, all of those, those other eight are in the nine of, uh, are in the one called love. But I want to talk about them individually. Love, love is displaying a godly affection towards our fellow man and more importantly, a godly affection towards God. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy soul and thy neighbor as thyself. You got to love God. You got to love yourself. You got to love others. That's what love is all about. And we could go over to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 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 13 and talk about all the different components of love. But basically it comes down to the characteristics of God and love. God is love. God loves, so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's love. That somebody will lay down their life for you. That's that's love. That somebody would take your place. That's that's love. I mean, that is love. And and we we have that. We ain't just talking about an emotion. We're talking about an action. That's love. Love is more than just an emotion. A little tinkly feeling. A, it tickling in your stomach of, of, uh, of goosebumps running up and down. It is deeper than that. And then we go to joy. Oh, joy. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world can't take it away. Joy is a deeper inner gladness and delight that occurs when we obey God and trust his word. Oh, when you trust in God. When you acknowledge him with all your heart, he will direct your path. And I don't know about you, when I know I'm in the will of God and I'm walking according to his will and his way, I got joy, unspeakable joy. And then there's this word peace. Peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace. That guards our heart and mind. That, that's a quietness within ourselves when, when we learn to trust God and, and focus in on his word. We, 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 we have a peace. Not because our circumstances are all great. Not because our situations are all that we want them to be. But, but, but when we know 
that we can put our whole weight on God. We can trust him with all our heart and all our soul. That gives us peace. We may not understand everything that's going on, but we still got peace. Then the next word, the next word is long-suffering. Oh, the fruit of long-suffering. Nobody want to suffer, and we surely don't want to suffer long. But I'm here to tell you, in this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I have already overcome this world. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. I, I know what I'm talking about. And if you ain't had no downs yet, as the old folks just say, keep on living. You'll understand it better by and by. Long suffering is known as patience. Learning how to handle difficult people, difficult situations without blowing up. Oh, God has cultivated that fruit in me. Oh, he's a great vine dresser. <laughs> he's a great gardener. He's a great. Oh, he's so great in, in helping us and teaching us how to have long suffering. The next one is kindness. Kindness is just to treat others with love and respect. How do you treat others? Do you always walk around hating? Or do you look for the good in others? You look for the, for the best in others. That's, that's treating people with love and respect. And goodness, oh goodness, goodness, my goodness, is to do what is right, to do what is good. To do what is acceptable unto the Lord. And faithfulness. That's trusting God to meet your every need. Are you that faithful? Or are you worrying about this? Or doubting that God can do this? I mean no matter what we're going through in this world. It's a small thing. What is the greatest challenge of the world? We live. And then we die. And, and, and that is so uncertain. But when you know Jesus, he has the victory over death. And he told us that because he has the victory over death, he is giving us eternal life. So we don't have to be uncertain about death. And being that we ain't uncertain about death anymore, we can trust God with anything. Nothing's too small for God. Nothing's too big for God. Then next is gentleness. Some might say it's meekness, uh, but meekness or gentleness, either one of them falls into play here. But, but, but it's simply being humble in spirit. Yes, we got confidence in God. We got great confidence in God. And because we have confidence in God, we can be bold and we can come to his throne of grace and ask for anything that we stand in the need of. That's great boldness with God. But then we have to realize it's by his grace and by his mercy. Grace meaning uh, 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 we, we get unmerited favor from God. We get what, 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 what we don't, we don't, we, we get things that, that we didn't earn. It's a gift from God. And then his, his, the grace's sister is mercy. And mercy, mercy is, 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 is when we receive from God blessings that we don't even deserve. Where, 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 where he should have killed us. But instead he forgave us. Oh, that's mercy. That's serious 
mercy. And when you realize that you have these two twin sisters, grace and mercy, following you all the days of your life, it should humble you and you should have a gentle and humble spirit. And finally, this one they call temperance or self-control being the fruit of the spirit. Gentleness and self-control, those like go together. So by, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can take charge over our thoughts, our actions, our feelings, rather than allowing all of those things to take control of us. I have a great ego. I'm, I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm one of them people. Man, oh, man, my ego, my ego. My ego is off the chain. That's the, we call it the egg. The egg want to take control all the time. But, but, but I don't have to let the egg in me take control. I just give my ego over to God and let his spirit take control. I'd rather have his spirit in control of my life. My decisions, my feelings, whatever's going on in my life. I'd rather have my spirit in control than to allow my egg, my ego to be in control, my flesh to be in control. And so God has to cultivate those things in us. Now, what do I mean? I talked about all the fruit of this. What do I mean by cultivating? I mean, you, you got to get some dirt around it. You got to get, get some, some fertilizing around it. You got to keep the weeds out of it. And, and the way God does that is if he want to increase your love, he puts you around unlovable people. If he want to increase your joy, he lets you be in a sad situation to see if you're going to praise him. If he want to give you more peace, he makes the world turn upside down to see if you're going to trust in him. And if he wants to give you more long suffering, he, he, he puts you in a situation where you got to wait a little while longer. When he wants to increase your kindness, he lets you get into situations where, where you don't have to be kind to nobody, but you are kind. When he wants you to have that goodness, when he cultivates that goodness, he gives you those choices to do right or do wrong. And when he wants to increase your faithfulness, when he's cultivating that fruit of faithfulness, he puts you in situations where you have to just trust in the Lord. I, I don't know what to do, God. I, I ain't got no action plan. I don't have any strategy. I don't have any way out of this. There ain't no way out of this unless you don't, if you don't deliver me, God. That's when we learn to cry unto the Lord. And we cry and we cry. It's like the woman with the issue of blood said, if I could just touch, I didn't spend everything I got. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And then gentleness or that meekness. He puts you in situations where <laughs> I like this one so much. It's like, wow, God. I walk around, I look around, and I'm the smartest one in this room. Not because I'm smart in and of myself, but I know you've given me the knowledge and the experience. But yet, instead of being boastful about it, instead of being arrogant about it, instead of depending on my own confidence in this, I trust you and I learn to have wisdom and understanding. Oh, hallelujah. And keep my eye on you. Because being humble in spirit. Gentleness means that. But not knowing that you and everyone else is valuable. You ain't better than nobody else. But everybody is valuable to God. And then finally. Self-control. He often has us all by ourselves. When ain't nobody else watching. And we have to decide what we going to do. Are we going to do right? Or are we going to do wrong? Are we going to let our ego lead us? 
our flesh lead us or are we going to let the spirit lead us? Oh, hallelujah. So, so, so that's the fruit of the spirit. And I, I wanted to just take my time. It's a whole lot of scripture that, that, that goes with all of this. And, and, and I'm, I'm not being, being mean by not reading all the scripture, but, but I wanted to just, just go there with us as we talk about this. So let me let me let me start reading some scriptures. Verse verses eighteen because I don't want y'all to say, well, he went through the whole Sunday school lesson. He just read one scripture and two. Yeah, 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 yeah. But let's let's read some things. Verse eighteen of, of Galatians chapter five. But when you are directed by the Spirit, the New Living Translation says, you are not under the obligation of the law. That this is telling us that 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 the life in the Spirit does not need the law. Because see, we're saved by grace. And that's through faith in Jesus Christ. And if we walk in that grace and we walk in the spirit, we will follow the law of Moses. We won't steal, kill, and destroy. We won't be covenant. We won't be haters. We'll love the Lord thy God and we'll put no other God before him. Those are the laws of Moses. We'll do those things if we're directed by the Spirit. How do you become directed by the Spirit? You get the Word of God in you. You submit to the Spirit in prayer. You give Him praise. You give God all the praise and all the thanksgiving. You stay prayed up. You stay praised up. You stay word up. Word up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 19, and I'm going to go all, all the way to 21 on this one. When you follow the desires of of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurities, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorceries, hospitality, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, uh, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. These are the bad fruits. These are the bad things. These are the sins. And this is all about when you are walking around having it your way, like you at Burger King, and this is having this self-ruled life. This self-rule life, oh, that's that just produces bad fruit. See, see, let me let me say this. We we reap what we sow. So if you sow this kind of stuff, you're gonna reap that kind of stuff. But if you sow the fruit of the spirit and every aspect of your life, you will reap it. Hallelujah. Then we go to verses 22 all the way down to, to 24. And I, I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit, but the Holy Spirit, it says, okay, that's the New Translation. The, the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no law against these things. Oh, hallelujah. There is no law. If you do this, you don't have to worry about no police. You do this, you don't have to worry about no law. If you're walking around in love and with giving people love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, you don't have to worry about nothing. And verse 24 says this, those who belong to Christ have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Have you nailed your bad stuff to the cross? Well, Jesus did. Have you submitted to that death, that burial and that resurrection of that bad life? If you have, then God is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you, cultivating the Spirit, cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. And verse 25 says, since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow 
The Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoking one another or be jealous of one another. Don't be trying to look at my fruit. That's God's business. Too many people are fruit inspectors and then when you go and look at somebody else's fruit, you get conceited or you provoke one another or you get jealous of one another. Stop trying to test my fruit. I know the word God says you'll know the people by the fruit that they bear, but it's not about you judging, folks. Spirit, no spirit. Oh, let me say it like they say in the world. Gang, no gang. Sorry, that, that's how they say it in the world. Yeah, you should know other people's spirit because you're going to see their love, your love and their love, their spirit and your spirit going to jump and all oh, you get excited. Dude, let that be the, yo, yo, if you're going to be a fruit inspector. Let that be what you inspect. Don't be getting jealous or a covetous or, or, or get conceited. Because you got so much love in somebody else. They are still in the construction business. He's constructing us. He's still preparing us. He's still working on us. You need to realize he's still working on you too. So finally, 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 the last part of this, after we talked about this, this life in the spirit, and we looked at the self-rule life, and then we're, we're looking at the spirit-filled life here, the final part is practicing the spirit-led life. And that goes over into Galatians chapter 6, starting with verse 1 all the way to 10. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to shorten this as much as I can. But listen to it from the New Living Translation. Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by sin, you who are godly should gently and humbly help that person back into the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. See, that's why you have to watch how you be pointing your fingers and expecting other people's fruit and judging other people's fruit. Because if you don't be careful, you will fall into the same thing that you're judging them on. But if you see a person going on the wrong path, be gentle and be humble. Be, be kind. Look at the fruit of the Spirit. Love on them. And then trust God that he's going to help them through. Verse 2, verse 2 of 6th chapter of Galatians. Share each other's burdens and, and, and in this way, and in this way, obeying the law of Christ. Pray with folks, walk with folks, hold on to folks. If you think you are too important to help someone, you are fooling yourself. You are not in that important. That's what the, oh, hallelujah. You ain't all that. And a bag of chips and dip on the side? Be humble. You can help somebody. If it ain't nothing but giving somebody a smile. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That may be the help that they need. Or giving somebody a hug. You never know what people are going through from day to day. Verse 4 says, Pay careful attention to your own works. For then you will get the satisfaction of a job. Well done. And you won't need to compare yourself to anybody else. Oh, I can't wait to that day where I can hear the Lord say, you my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on up a little higher and I'll make you ruler over many. Verse 5 says, for we are each responsible for our own conduct. Don't be telling that lie like the old uh, uh, Flip Wilson uh, 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 <laughs> hallelujah uh, character called Geraldine used to say every time she messed up and Killer was coming after her. She said, oh, Killer, I didn't mean to do it. The devil made me do it. No, be responsible for your own conduct. Stop blaming other people. Verse 6 says, Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers, sharing all good things with them. You've got great teachers out there. 
I see a couple of pastors here on, on Facebook, and I know some are on the conference call. Pastors, you are great teachers. You're teaching the word of God. But you also, not pastors, but just pastors and other people, all, all people, you need to take care of the people that are teaching you. You need to give back to them. They're, 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 they're spending time with God. You need to give to them. Share what the good things that you have. Then verse 7 says, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will have harvest what you plant. I got to read that one out, out of the uh, uh, um, uh, um, King James. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that will he reap. That also will he reap. Don't be getting this thing twisted. If you sow it, you're going to reap it. God is not going to be mocked. Then we go on to verse 8. It says, those who, who, who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature, this is out of the New Living Translation, will harvest decay and die from the sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. He says, so let us not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest, blessed if we don't give up. Let me read it out of the King James Version. For he that soweth in the flesh shall also reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, glory, hallelujah, we will, we shall reap if we faint not. And finally, verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, the King James Version says, let us do good unto all men, especially them who are in the household of faith. The New Living Translation says, therefore, whatever we have, whenever we have the opportunity, we should do good to everyone, especially those in the family of faith. My brothers and my sisters, that's living a spirit-filled life. We've been taught this morning. He's put it on our hearts. He's placed it out here. So, how do you live it? How you living? Are you living in the fruit of spirit? Do you have your love, your joy, your peace? Your long suffering, your, your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness, your gentleness, and your self-control. Are those things operating in your life? How you living? Well, I'm encouraging you. Let the Holy Spirit help you live. The life God has designed for you to live. We're going to end the lesson here. And I'm going to give a prayer first for all of us who are already saved. And then we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. For those of us that are already saved, God, we, we ask you right now to help us live. A spirit-filled life. Help us walk with you and talk with you. Continue, Lord, to, to mold us and shape us. Continue to cultivate the fruit of the Spirit in us. To live the life you would have us to live. A life of love. A life of joy and peace and long-suffering. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. We submit to your will and your way and give you control of our lives. We'll follow you, Lord, for the rest of our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For those that don't know the Lord and the partner that sins and you have not given your life to Christ, I want to pray the prayer of salvation with you. 
simple prayer. It's based on Romans 10, verses 9 and 10, and Romans 10, verse 13. And 10, 13 says this, Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10 simply says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you shall be saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sin and was buried and that you raised him from the dead. I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. I invite you, Jesus, to become the Lord of my life, to rule and to reign in my heart from this day forward. Please send your Holy Spirit to help me obey you and to do your will for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Those of you on Facebook, we're getting ready to get off of Facebook and we're going to go into overtime in the conference call. If you have any questions or thoughts you want to add to the lesson, please come on to the overtime period. We have prayer time. We have discussion time. We might even have a prophetic time. The number to call on the conference call is 910-218-0531. 910-218-0531. Thank you again for joining us here at the God and Light Ministry International Prayer and Bible Study Conference Call. This is your Sunday School Lesson Edition, and I am your host, Pastor Mark McCoy. I hope this word has helped you, and I encourage you to be blessed and to always be a blessing. Talk to you later on Facebook. Amen.